Hey, welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having a magical day, and thank you for taking the time to support the channel. Back with a new Magic the Gathering Arena deck guide. Playing some alchemy, I know, I know. But for those of you who do enjoy, we are having some fun today playing a little bit of jank. This is going to be a Simic infinite turn combo deck utilizing the new uh, emphasis on the scry mechanic within Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth. Gonna break down the deck list within the video talking about the strategies and synergies in depth so you understand exactly how to pilot the deck. And then we'll demonstrate all of this within our mythic ranked gameplay footage against the best decks and players literally in the world wrapping up with our final thoughts deck review channel news and of course our pack opening so don't go anywhere make sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel you can also become a youtube member and heck why not join our community discord as well if you're interested in continuing the conversation thanks again and well let's take a look at the new deck turn me on <laughs> and uh, that is what we're looking to do with the deck uh, we need to get all of our combo pieces assembled. And, uh, well, there's quite a few of them. It's pretty janky. But thanks to the Prosperous Innkeeper, the Displacement Kitten, Elrond, Lord of Rivendale, and our Oracle of the Alpha, we can go, uh, you know... Oh, and, and uh, Lost Isle Calling, of course. Uh, we can go basically infinite, uh, playing our entire deck, taking as many turns as we really want, going absolutely ham, right? Now that sounds very good, but, you know, this does come at a bit of a cost. It's difficult to pull off, right? Because, uh, you know, I went through these combo pieces here for you. We will do this more in depth in a moment, but there's five of them, right? It's hard to get five things into play. Well, first off, it's hard to draw five things into your hand. And then it's hard to get them in play and remain in play while you accumulate them, right? So it's a bit of a pipe dream. However, you know, it's totally possible. Full disclaimer, I wouldn't expect to rank up very aggressively with this deck. However, I would expect to have a ton of fun. So getting uh, into it a little bit more in depth, we built the deck around the Lost Isle Calling for two mana as an enchantment. Whenever you scry, put a verse counter on the Lost Isle Calling. Furthermore, we can pay six to exile it, drawing cards equal to the number of verse counters. And then if there are seven or more counters on it, we get to take an extra turn, right? So A, it's refilling our hand and B, giving us another turn. That was one of the biggest downsides within a multi-turn deck is, um, you know, the refilling of your hand. Taking an extra turn is typically not very cheap, quite expensive, and that limits your card draw, right? This forces people to want to take double turns so they can, you know, copy a turn spell, get their next turn, spend that turn drawing, and then on that third turn of theirs that they're taking, reinstate another turn spell continue the process we don't necessarily have to do that here uh because we are comboing out and uh scrying 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 creating treasures creating treasures creating treasures the life gain is not a necessity but very nice for survivability and uh so we're accumulating scry counters within the lost tile right that's what that's doing uh next up is elrond lord of rivendale for three mana three power two toughness and whenever Elrond or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. If this is the second time this ability is resolved this turn, the ring will tempt you. Uh, we don't really care about the ring tempting us. Of course, it is nice, but not really a part of the deck. What we want is the reoccurring scry. So now, you know, we're going to be flickering the innkeeper, gaining life from the other innkeepers, creating treasures, and now also scrying. So the treasures will go into paying for the Lost Isle and the scrying will, you know, accumulate those verse counters so we can actually take that second turn. Moving on, we'll have the Displacer Kitten for four mana, two power, two toughness with avoidance. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, exile to one target, non-land permanent you control, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Like I said, we're going to be flickering that innkeeper in and out, in and out, in and out to trigger Elrond 
to trigger the other innkeepers and, uh, you know, to stack up the Lost Isle. Just really trying to hit this home for you uh, so you understand it as it is fairly complicated. And then finally, the Oracle of the Alpha for three mana, two power, three toughness with flying. When it enters the battlefield, conjure the power of nine into your library, which is wild. This is what makes the draw cards equal to your verse counters really, really powerful because now we're drawing the Moxes, which turn the combo on by allowing us to go infinite with that kitten, basically. Um, very, very nice with the Oracle. And whenever it attacks, Scry. So that's gonna support the deck as well. It was basically built for the, you know, what we're doing. So that's what we have uh, within the combo, right? That's gonna get you where you need to go. We do accent it with Gadrail. Whenever the ring tempts you, you can choose a creature other than Gadrail if you do Scry 3. Phenomenal. And then uh, whenever you scry, you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, reveal it, put it into the battlefield. This is really, really nice as well as it can help us accelerate through our, like the, the, the ramp is nice, but thinning our library of land cards is even better, right? Uh, and, you know, put those into the battlefield, then you can do it even faster next turn and it's going to compound turn by turn. So Gadriel is really, really nice. Uh, put the land on top, sneak it into the battlefield. Very, very cool. And then the council's deliberation. Three of these for two mana instant speed, drawing a card. Whenever you scry, if you control an island, you can exile the council's deliberation from uh, your graveyard. And if you do draw a card, this is so good. Oh my God, I love this card. Uh, double draw, you know, very, very nice. And that second draw is free. So very cool. Then we have an elven farsight for one mana sorcery speed. Scry three, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, draw that card. So this is very nice. You know, you're going to scry, put a creature on top, then a land with Gadriel, and then whatever you want to draw next, which is probably another scry element. Four copies of Fading Hope, also for one mana. This time at instant speed, returning target creature to its owner's hand. If its mana value was three or less, scry. Um, you know, both offensive and defensive, you can protect your combo pieces, throw them back into your hand. You can also, uh, you know, offset your opponent's tempo by interacting with any of their threats. Make Disappear, counter target spell, unless its controller pays two. If you sack a creature, uh, they're going to have to pay four as it copies itself. Consuming Tide is really, really good uh, with the ring. Don't tell anyone, though. For four mana at Sorcery, each player chooses a non-land permanent they control, then return all non-land permanents not chosen this way to the owner's hand. You may draw a card uh, for each opponent who has more cards in their hand than you do. So this is really cool because all the moxes are going to get bounced and we can replay those and go crazy to combo town we can also bounce our ring back to recast it for protection from everything until our next turn which is so stupid uh for four mana with indestructible we can also tap it to accumulate a burden counter and then draw cards equal to the number of burden counters and then at the beginning of our upkeep, lose life equal to the number of burden counters. So uh, the life gain through the innkeeper comes full circle to the ring, allowing us to just go crazy with it. Just draw every card you have, uh, which is nice. And then, like I said, the tide is going to uh, keep that combo going if you want. Really upset your opponent because uh, you're going to have all your land in the battlefield. Uh, you know, you can tap these treasures first for mana before you cast the tide uh, and then just reflood the battlefield and they're like oh well i only have seven land I, how'd you cast 17 things right uh so you know that's going to be a really helpful way to win as well with this being said we do have the soaring city to bounce we have the rivendale to scry who endures to destroy uh which is quite nice and the crossroads will scry as well as some dual lands for consistency uh very very nice deck that i am having a ton of fun playing uh more fun than i should but uh you know i just Part of me wishes that the alchemy rank and the standard slash explorer rank, like the digital rank and the, the paper rank were different because I love to play the jank. You know, the jank in alchemy is actually kind of enjoyable, but, you know, it just is kind of a bummer that it's tied to my regular constructed rank. But, you know, whatever. We're having fun. Uh, the season's going to restart. We're going to maybe race to mythic. We'll see. No promises, but uh, should be should be a good time. So uh, stick around for the gameplay. Like I said, don't go anywhere. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We're going to tear up into a pack and talk a little bit about uh, how the deck performed and where we can go with it after this. Or give me a give me an L in chat if streamer tilt upsets you and give me a W in chat if it excites you, if you find it entertaining. Give me an L or a W. Do you like streamer tilt or do you not like it?
Going first, keeping seven. Um, since we're forced to go first, I guess just crossroads scry. This is going to be green. I have nothing else at instant speed, so it's hard to gain advantage that way. Secondary innkeeper is not bad. Elrond, innkeeper, oracle kitten with the enchantment. So far, so good. We need the enchantment, which is going to be hard to get. But we have the kitten, and that's just a, a, a massive bonus here, right? Is that my innkeeper? <laughs> I think it is. All right, let me take the scry. It's going to be blue. And keepers a go. Get that life. In case we're going to draw this innkeeper. Love Rivendale. No legendary creature though, unless it's uh, our ring keeper. So maybe it just goes for now. So innkeeper into hand, thanks to the far sight. Scrice, keep it there. Just hit for two. I'm going to continue to pile on while they're tapped. It only costs one treasure because it replaces one of them. So no ramp, but, you know, not too much of a, a step backwards either. Five available mana. When Clone Crafter enters the battlefield, conjure a duplicate of a random creature card from your opponent's library. That's how they got the innkeeper. They spend any mana, then they get the oracle for their own. Nice. We all know what that does. One mana short, hey? Well, we won't need it next turn. Land can probably go for now. There's the block, that's fine. Oh, they got their Black Lotus immediately. Nice. That's pretty good. Now they use that to draw 15 cards. I think maybe that's what we're missing, is like a Memory Deluge. I think... Is it scry? Or it's look at the top and then draw? Or is it scry? So many cards in my brain at this point. There's fragments here and there, you know. Don't you dare! Randy! Should have saved it till it's at six counters. Maybe they counter it when I play it next. Warzone Duplicator. Uh, enters the battlefield, return target creature and opponent controls. Wow, okay. Thanks. And then they get a duplicate of it? Nice. It's brittle, bro. I don't know if you like to bounce those too much, but whatever.
leave the land. I should have kept a land earlier on, I think. We're going to take quite a hit here, though. We do have the ring. Just looking for a consuming tide at this point, I guess. So I don't really want to play the Oracle. Well, good for you. They might run into the same problem. They have a big hit. Luckily, we have plenty of life. They probably have counter magic up. Okay, Elrond for the first scry. There was no hold up there, gained three life. Those innkeepers are really helping. It's going to disappear when we Oracle anyways. Right? Because the shuffles. One, two, three, four, five. I can go. I mean, we're only casting for four anyways. Oh, gosh. I guess the Oracle could be our ring bearer. They have five mana, potentially six, and four cards in hand. Oh, wow, the shark is good. Into a pearl. Uh, is that a zero token creature? <laughs> I like it. Another bird. Another nine cards into their deck. Right? Brutal. Let's take the scry. Could be a blue source. Hidden in play. Time walk stays there. Ah, oh, they could double block it. Brutal. Okay. So the Oracle can't attack. A third one? What? Dude. What's mine say? Sweet. <laughs> and they're getting damage. We go down to twenty seven. I guess we could bounce an innkeeper or a treasure. That would actually be better. More life gain this way. And I do. Oh, maybe that's actually good. I do plan on paying quite a bit of uh, life with the ring. So it's nice to have. This is still good, though, because I think we need the uh, six mana here, which we do have. Land can go.
<sighs> they still have two blockers, so no attacks. And we take one damage. Let's take another turn. And a massive draw. Very nice. Also draw with the ring. Because why not? Okay, so... Isle in play. We're bouncing the innkeeper. That's going to give us treasures. I'm glad we finally got it. We're good to go. I think we are uh, ready to rip. It's not bad. Again, just bouncing innkeepers with the moxes. Might even just look for another turn. We have so many scries, right? Actually, I'm going to zed out a lot. And just keep bouncing innkeepers for now. Tuesdays. Cat, cat, cat. I made him a bed, but the computer, he loves it. All we want is more uh, aisles. And then we start bouncing moxes. That actually doesn't work. Well, it does. It reset the mana. We have a green one. Mm, what's this at? Three? We need more scries. I'm going to place this other kitten in. At this point, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> Land goes. We're just scrying uh, as much as we can. I think we still keep the innkeepers bouncing. I think that's better, because then we're getting more scries. We're not getting scries with the, uh, the... I don't know why I started bouncing the moxes. It's a hard deck. You're going to need a, a couple playthroughs with it. Keep on the innkeepers, though. I don't want to give them the ability to draw seven cards when they're empty. Right? And now we have it, right? Sack the treasures. This brand new Lost Isle uh, is going to draw seven cards. 
and give us another turn. So we can continue the shenanigans. Bouncing innkeeper scrying, looking for another lost isle. We could get more time walks with an oracle, but there's so many cards in our deck. And I think there already is one. <laughs> so when it, now that we played this one, we can get another one. I don't want to dilute the deck too much, right? Good game, my friend. And that just sort of goes on and on and on. <laughs> uh, until you're ready to make your move, right? Very good, very good. Lots of life gain, which allows us to go crazy with the ring on each of our turns, ensuring that we can, you know, get to uh, a lost style, get to a time walk, and, um, you know, just get to more cards, right? So it was really nice to be able to pull that off. Thanks for our opponent for sticking it out that long. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, when you put these combo decks together, theoretically, you know, that's one thing, but then to, you know, get some practice with it in the late game is really, really important as well. Right. So, um, I hope you enjoyed. Oh, I didn't fucking record that match. You gotta be kidding me. Ah, uh, two twenty. going first. All right. Well, I mean, we're going to need it. This is always going to scry. I want to make sure we're dropping this on three. Right, because we're going first. Well, this can actually be our treasure. But this needs to be a green source. I love the ring. It is so darn good. It's a little bit of a later card, though, I think. Innkeeper, Galadriel with the treasure, Rivendale underneath. Not that we'll need it to be on. Oh, maybe we will. It's going to open up a Fading Hope to protect it. This is an ultra jank deck. Uh, you know, I don't know how many matches we're going to win. Hopefully a couple. You know, I have high hopes. Put a lot of work into it. But, uh, you know, we know we know how it goes. So I'm not going to spend that treasure if I don't have to. Or do we? Go all in? Then they have their choice of removing anything, though. Let's just keep playing it slow. Rivendale is now in untapped, thanks to Gadriel. Ooh, the brushstroke is sick. I'm just gonna bounce this Blood Artist token. Actually, I think it's like been conjured. Uh, it's been a while since I played Alchemy. That's not a token, that's a... That has been conjured. Play Rivendale while we have Gadriel in play. Make some treasures. Take our Swangle. Yeah, draft Adelphia. Uh, when the witch dies 
Uh, you do get to draft from its spell book, which is really good, but you know, we're going to need to get through that eventually. Holding hope to protect our creature from removal. A Dubele brush stroke. One of my favorite cards. The Blood Artist is so good. And then the brush stroke on the back end is just, you know, gravy. It's a straight up buffet, bro. Okay, one mana. We should be safe from removal. I'm gonna hold it. I just wish we had a little bit more. We don't have Elrond, so there's not really any scrying going on from the creature ETBs. Which is something we want. I think, uh, you know, it might just be a blood token cycle. Deadly Dispute would have been really good to keep. I'll tell you what. I assume that the witch gets in the way here. Really? Still no blocks. They're like, dude, I don't care. You see how much life gain I have? <laughs> okay, I mean, it makes sense. Four cards left in hand. Deadly Dispute, though. When Kami enters battlefield, target creature you control or creature in your graveyard gains when you control. Uh, when a creature you control with greater mana value then this card dies, return this card. Okay. So what are they choosing? So it had to be like a win a three drop dry dies. Losing life, losing life. They draft. So we're gonna bounce. The artist and then flicker our kitten to dodge the right. That's going to pop the innkeepers again. We get the scry. Land can definitely go. Oh, uh, Gadriel. We would have put that land in for free. Sorry. Can't tell me what to do. And at this point, we're just going to bounce an innkeeper for the treasure, for the life gain. This is into hand. Then the land. Okay. So first, it's a creature comes into our hand. Then Gadriel is a land into the battlefield. And then we're all about the Oracle. Which we're going to lose our hope, but whatever. Another land out. I think the Kami would just block my Gadriel, and I'm not into it. We're out of cards. We need a nice top deck here. <laughs> One ring, please. Here's the Blood Artist back. fourth land and then we lose either our kitten or the alpha with a right both are good the kittens maybe better 
But the ore, oh, they're just so brutal, both of them, right? Alright, we're gonna lose the kitty. They might attack. I'm gonna scry. One treasure's fine. I really like those cards. They're hard to throw away. Kind of not ramping in the way we want, but whatever. Because they removed that kid and I need it back. We're at 23 life, so, you know, it's not the worst. So they wipe the whole thing. Cool story. So that's one, two, three, four. That's so much damage. I don't even want to talk about it. One, two, three, four. Oh no. Oh, creatures are what? Oh, the type. Oh no. I thought it was all creatures. Only the chosen type. Um, yeah, that's not good. Why not choose Halfling? Reading the card explains the card. Let's take an extra turn. Let's scry. Innkeeper goes, kid and stays. Uh, decline. I think Gadriel could swing. Draft away. damage that's fine well I mean it's not fine but could be worse gain some more life take our scry where have you been It's not a land, but I'll allow it. They have a ton of life here, hey? Up to 18. We have for three, down to 15. Three cards in hand. Oh, the specialist brings back the disciple. I guess that's pretty good. Oh, I don't like that. No blocks down to 14. Then their last card, though. Elrond Adelphia. <laughs> Hope goes. Let's try to get some land. We have the kitten. It's not a land, we don't need to reveal it. I mean, we're at six Isle Counters, um, you know, we can easily go to seven. Take some extra turns. I think we're surviving here. 
It's only eight damage. No blocks. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. Especially with the artists. They could even kill us. Probably should chump block that. Field wipe, you lose. Oh! <gasps> Why? <sighs> it's like I narrate my own demise. That's the game. Yeah, I'm just reading a script. This is all preordained. I mean, I don't know. This is going to take way too long. It only speeds up once I've conceded. Never change arena. Opponent goes first. I think we keep it. Hopefully they play nice and slow. So the scry's up to us, which means we save it. It's up Tuesdays. Not on the keyboards. Not on the keyboards. Oh, catbutt.com. Bringing you the cat booty. Daily. Uh, I will untap. And just pass over. You get one good bump and one bad bump with this with this kitty. <laughs> little nice, little naughty. I don't really appreciate the, the naughty. Get that thing out of here. We can go calling first. Then I'm going to Baloo and Scry Adelphia. Land can go for now. And then we will draw by exiling the Council's Deliberation into what is always another land. <laughs> ah, the One Ring in play. Get down, gonna get dirty. So they can just dunk on our aisle at any time. Not a fan. I wonder if I should do this first, try to get that Displacer Kitten prior to filling my library. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is definitely going to get dunked on. But we don't really need it. All we need is the original ETB effect. It's good to get the Displacer Kitten before the Oracle because it fills your library up and then it's, you know, it's diluted. It's harder to find. Wow, they're really drawing. Gas is decent. We're totally tapped out here, right? Ooh, nice. So first take the scry. 
No, don't kill me. Don't shoot there! Just leave it alone. I, I just maybe fading hope it, I guess. He's gonna bounce it back. But I want to scry first. We have a kid and that one can go. Then the kitten. Ooh. I guess we should have kept this little kitty. Ouch, my bad. You know, you try to sequence things correctly and you just get burned, you know? It's like, well, no, I actually should have done it that wrong way. They're just gonna silex us. Not a fan. Mmm, beautiful. Bounce that back. No life gain. Next turn, the you know it's 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 broken, but whatever. Ah, very busted. Guess we just take it. No blocks. There's so many cards in their hand, it's not even funny. <laughs> Let's draw before the Shelly hits again. Our scry. It's not required, but it is good. But we need to deal with Shieldred. Right. Shelly dunks on us so hard with the Lost Isle. And just drawing cards is really being punished right now. Massive field wipe. Do they play a land? They're down to 10. We're going to go down to 15 most likely. They draw. Of course they draw. I have protection, so I'm not sure why they're tapping, but... See how I baited them? Uh, you know, if you say this narrative, it just happens. Whether it's to your opponent's benefit or not. So sometimes, you know, you just kind of lead them down the path. Head them off at the bend. <laughs> Surprise! Uh, I don't know if they want to draw. Okay. Creature. They draw goes to four, right? Brutal, dude. We need something that deals with Shelly.
Might save the ring one turn. So let's say... You know, we take... 3, 4, 5, 8... Yeah, I think I'm going to sit on it. They're not drawing. They're just taking three. They already have a full hand, right? Only seven mana, so it's not a double shielded. We just hold our fading hope until they go to draw. Or they get life gain. Because I think this could have life gain, couldn't it? Interesting. Not playing Shieldred. Very interesting. Yeah, we're taking two to ten. Blue and we scry. It's too late. We're not at that part of the game anymore. <laughs> I will draw. Nice. Okay. Play a new ring. So we stop the life gain or life loss. Chump blocker out. Double fading hope active. Hey. None of that. <laughs> we need like a third ring. I don't know if we're going to make it through this. So they go down to four. We have protection, so don't care. It'd be cool if I could flash in a creature and hit them for lethal. Right? They're down to four. Get Rust Code? Interesting. They have to play another ring to reset their first. They need these counters off it. Right? That would actually suck for us. We might get one more turn. I don't think we're going to get two. What?
3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Grab a chump blocker. I'm sure there's removal. Really? Hilarious. Thank you. This is an additional scry. Which we should be scrying on our last aisle, but... Not in this match. There's no time for that. Ah, uh, gets immediately removed. <laughs> oh no, that is good. Rusko, I don't appreciate that. Land goes. Not good. And they had life gain, which sucks. And may even have more. Down to two. That's pretty drastic. We have to keep one for Shelly. I don't want to bounce the Resurrected. Six damage down to three. Pretty close match. I didn't really get to execute the deck in the way I would have liked to, but I guess showcasing some of its survivability. Whew. Wish. And I'm down to three life too, right? What? It's only one life, unless they have multiple spells. There she is. Hi. Tap that ring, baby. Oh, they can have lethal as long as they don't tap the ring. That sucks for us. And that kills us. As soon as we draw, we're dead. Good game. They got us. No, oh, they got us because their uh, draw resolves first. Dang. No, we definitely lose.
That hurt. That was a good match. Just more lands. Woo! Orkly, dorkly, bruh. The deck is getting down and getting dirty. The knots, tap, scry, draw, an option. Samwise, ugh, I don't want, if you could add white, you could add black, uh, you know, there's different ways to do it, like Radabrick, if you wanna go crazy. I think that this way is fine. Uh, the other ways are also like almost more convoluted. Um, Arwen, you know, Scry, Delphia. I don't think it's required. It doesn't fit to the combo, but it's nice. You know, it's good value. Um, Boromir, if you wanted to add white, I don't think that's really what we're doing. That's a different deck. Um, you know, when it attacks Scry 1, you know, I just, I don't think it's gonna be what we want it to. Um, you know, it could help you get lethal by tapping all their things, but we're using the Tide. You know, it's more defensive. This only has two toughness. Uh, the Gift, additional draw, you know, two legendary creatures is kind of hard to pull off though. The Anchor would be really good, but win more, you know, we don't need it. Joint Exploration, you know, I actually really like, and if we had more instant speed interaction, some flash or something, I think that this would be really, really nice because, you know, it's gonna ramp, it's gonna scry, it does what we want. Uh, the Invasion, is nice because we can flicker it with the kitten um but we're already getting the scry by flickering a creature right and then the life gain and treasure as well so you know we're just going to flicker the innkeeper instead uh the planetar more of a control card it was a little slow in testing uh the blade you know if we're adding white definitely a possibility for us and uh elrond is nice but again you know it doesn't actually fit with the combo it's a good finisher um if you wanted one of kind of similar to the Hallbreaker Horror, right? Uh, you know, there's a couple uh, other cards that you could slip in that, you know, we ob honestly considered. So by no means is this a sideboard for traditional best of three. This was a maybe board. These are cards that I considered for the deck while I was building it, right? Just to help broaden your horizons and then help you guys maybe build uh, some decks yourself while, you know, learning about new cards and, uh, you know, how they work together, right? So with that being said, let's tear open the pack. I love these black bars when they pop up on, on my uh, my camera. It zooms it out and turns it into a fisheye aspect, and my GoPro just does it randomly. Sometimes it'll be on for 40 hours and not do it. Other times, five minutes. Feast of the Victorious Dead can be kind of busted. Same thing uh, goes for Nahiri's Resolve. That's actually our rare of the pack. Our Animus Might. An Alt Art Copper Coat. Vanguardio, Vanguardio, Copriodo, <laughs> and then our Phyrexian uh, token there. So, uh, and here he's Resolve, our Copper Coat, bringing home the Epilogue Booster. If you guys are interested in the Lord of the Rings Booster Boxes, we've opened two of them, and those videos are all conveniently located in one playlist. Just pack after pack after pack. They're quick, like a minute or two, um, so you can slay through those. If you're interested, hey, and here we are again. Thank you all so much for watching. I truly hope you all have an absolute magical day. Just the best day, right? And uh, you know, I'll see you again next time. You know the drill, like, comment, subscribe, Discord, community member uh, on YouTube here if you wanna participate on our live YouTube streams every single Sunday. You can challenge me, we can build you a deck. It's a ton of fun. Take care and we'll see you soon.